Viewer discretion is advised. What up, Heel Faction? Welcome back to Heel Shit. Why do we call it that? Because bad guys do heel shit. I'm Dark Chords. That's Draven Grimes. This is HSP. We're talking the bloodline tonight. We got a That's Heel Shit segment. And I guess we're going to talk about this fucking punk video. We'll do that. How you doing, man? Uh, better since technology wants to work for us. Yeah. Okay. That was that was some bullshit. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for coming on a little late. Um, apparently, Streamlabs did an update. We did not get notified of the fucking update. And had to redo all the fucking settings. So, apologies for that. Next time, I'm just going to deny the fucking update. If it lets me. I, I think this time, it just fucking started. I mean, that, that's typically what I do with all the updates on my phone and shit. So, mm. probably why it screams at me every day. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, so, what's new? Um... Not too much. Um, uh, this weekend is a free weekend. No bookings or anything. So I've taken it upon myself to go get some ink therapy. Very nice. Very nice. Yep. I'll be getting my uh, my braid tribute finally. Way past due. Very cool. Very good. Very good. What about you, buddy? What about you? Uh, it's been a trying fucking day. I don't know. I'm trying to uh, trying to hold it together in the sense that um, in the sense that I don't want to fucking blow up and go on a rant. I I just I think we've already done that today on both sides. Yeah. And it, there's been a lot of rants from me the past week or so on here. I was referring to the ones that are off air. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, yeah. But I'm your brother. That, that, that's what I do. I'm here when you need me. Yeah. Even when you don't need me, I'm still here. Indeed. <sighs> like the little Diet Coke incident. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so, um, before we get into this, I want to introduce, and I'm going to do this a couple of times during this show to make sure that we get the viewers involved in this. Yeah. We have just launched, finally, our hashtag fuck Logan Paul t-shirt. Yes. Put that I am, bitch on screen. I am showing it on screen. If you'll notice, it's got uh, very similar to the Hulkamania font. Um, it it comes, feels right. comes in both black and yellow. Brother. Hashtag fuck Logan Paul with, the, with this. Mm-hmm. You want to support the show? Fuck Logan Paul. It's only eighteen ninety five. It's almost at cost. Uh, just click the link in the description for the the merch store on Streamlabs. Or the get... merch. The merch. Is beautiful. God, it's been a while since we've done that. Yeah, I knew it has. Been yeah, it has. Um, but yeah, check it out. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll do this in a bit when we get a little more viewers on. But uh, yeah. We've been talking about a Fuck Logan Paul t-shirt. Finally got a Fuck Logan Paul t-shirt. And just in case you're curious, Fuck Logan Paul. Hashtag Fuck Logan Paul. That's right. Hashtag. I will I will be having mine ordered first thing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and yes, I will be getting the yellow one. And yes, I will be cutting it up like a like a Hogan shirt. <laughs> you're not gonna slice the back, are you? Yes, the fuck I am. Nice. Brother. Yes. Brother. And then I'll get a black one and just cut it like I always do mine. So, <sighs> lots of cutting in my future. Indeed. 
I wish I could just cut this fucking weight because god damn it, I'm tired of this fucking diet. Right. No, uh. let, let me let me give you the my, my meal for the day. Mm-hmm. Uh so it was a half gallon of water, buddy, what and some Ritz's uh, toasted to chip mm-hmm. deal gimmicks. If I'm you don't if you don't have uh... the fucking phenomenal, I the I don't have a bag on me. But the sour cream onions are fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. But I was Every, only allowed to, I only allowed myself to have like a handful of them. Everything then, sour cream and onion is delicious. I don't think a sour cream and onion pussy would taste good. God damn it. You're correct. I think you need to check in on that. You might need to check in on that. You are correct. Almost everything. Uh and then to close my window, I had a nice little thing of stew meat that I made in the crock pot, which was fucking amazing. But I did mine with no seasoning, so it was very bland with some very bland rice. And yeah, but I'm down six pounds since I started this last week. So 23 more to go. I can't wait till I can't wait till Sunday. Fucking cheat day. I'm gonna fucking kill that shit. (laughs) What are your cheat days gonna look like? Um, well, my, my oldest son's birthday is Sunday. Mm-hmm. So me and a couple of buddies of mine, uh, from his church are doing like a little cookout deal for him. Got some ribs and chicken, some mac and cheese, baked beans, it's a, typically what we eat on our road trips, plus some birthday cake. Birthday cake. Oh yeah. You gotta have a piece of birthday cake. Whose birthday? I mean, it's his birthday. It's my oldest son's birthday. Oh, okay. How old is he gonna be? And he'll be thirteen. The big one, three. That's awesome. That's Damn awesome. It. First year and as then, a teenager. And then three days after that, your boy turns the big three four. So we're kind of like a double birthday deal. Great. So for about a month, I'll only be ten years older than you. No. Well, I mean, physically, we're probably about the same age. Shit. You think so? You don't feel me when I get up in the morning? (laughs) You don't feel my neck or my knees, dude. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We're both fucked up. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's, that's what's going on. We're actually having a restful weekend. I know the past few has been very uh, chaotic as Mm. far as scheduling with New Wave and Rose City and uh, weddings and whatnot. But I'm going to take it easy this weekend, rest up, and then we'll hit the road the following weekend. Yes, sir. We got we got old Rip Ruiz uh, going to New Wave on the 20th. We got you and I going on the 27th. And then I will be going solo again on the 4th of May. Hmm. Solo so, anyway. as Sokoa, baby. Just less tape on my knees. All right. Yeah. For now. So. For now. You wanted to uh, talk about the bloodline. Well, I figured it's only only poetic that we we go over the highlights and stuff, the highs and the lows, since essentially that storyline's over. I mean, Roman had an incredible 1,300 and... 16 day a long fucking time yeah a little over 1300 day reign as, as uh our undisputed wwe universal multicultural intergalactic heavyweight champion or whatever the fuck ultimate warrior says intergalactic planetary planetary intergalactic. It's sad that song popped in my head as soon as i said that yeah <laughs> obviously as me too. soon as i fucking said it <laughs> Uh, all right so what did you uh how'd you want to start uh as everything we do we'll, we'll pretty much just start at the beginning and uh <clears throat> basically when he returned in 2020 when he beat bray wyatt and braun Strowman for the universal title and we'll go from there all right um so 
let's rewind a little bit to 2020. What yeah. the fuck is this? Uh, new wave chat's popping off. Something's happening. I don't care. It ain't my name. Uh, as as a lot of people know, it was supposed to be uh, Goldberg versus Roman Reigns, WrestleMania 2020. Mm-hmm. I believe that was 36, if I remember correctly. Okay. Okay. So, obviously, uh, Roman Reigns has been battling leukemia for basically fucking ever at this point. So he opted out of WrestleMania. So they had to do the replacement where I think Braun Strowman beat him for the fucking title. And they went off of that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, when Roman was comfortable enough to come back, they need to get the belt off of him. And at the time, Bray and uh, Braun were in a feud. So they just basically interjected him and immediately put the universal title on Roman in 2020. And that's where basically this whole bloodline thing kicked off because his first feud was made of it. Jey Uso. Mm. And let's, let's be real about this. If it was not for that feud, I sincerely think this bloodline would not have fucking happened the way it happened. I believe so too. You wouldn't have had the animosity in the storylines. You wouldn't have the depth of character for not just Jay, but Jimmy and Solo when he came up. And obviously Roman and Paul. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm trying to remember. They did... Obviously, I'm not... I don't have any notes on it. I'm trying to do it straight from memory at this point. Unless I get lost and I'll pull some memory, uh, pull some shit up. But uh, they did two matches, right? Uh, yeah. Jay and Roman. The first one was just like a a regular match, and then the second one was inside Hell in a Cell, if, I, if I'm correct. But you are. Yeah. And basically, it was one of those things where Roman beat him so bad that he started seeing his flaws and uh how he was taking everything and joined the fucking bloodline with Jimmy, with Paul. And that run was fucking phenomenal. We, we got the feud with Kevin Owens. Uh, we got the feud with, um, <clears throat> I'm going to butcher this, Daniel Bryanson. <laughs> come on, come on, dog. I had to. I had to. You ain't said it in like three weeks. I, I miss it. <laughs> I miss you legitimately getting pissed off at yourself. Ah, uh, fuck. Oh, oh, you owes. Anyway, you, you had the feud with Copeland or Edge, uh, that triple threat WrestleMania 37 when they allowed the fans back in Tampa. Mm-hmm. Still a great fucking match to watch. Um, and I'll be honest, that was a weird show to watch. Mm-hmm. It was more weird to watch that one than it was to watch COVID Mania the year before because we got so used to the computer screens and, and the... What do they call the place? Thunderdome. Thunderdome. Yeah, we got so used to that kind of environment mm-hmm. that with real fans back in there, it was like a kind of an awkward thing at first. I never want to go through that again. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Oh, it was bad. Um, and then and then from there, uh, obviously, we had the, the little mini feud with Cena for... It was only for like six weeks, right? Something like that. Yeah, and then... To, in my opinion, the biggest feud uh, in Roman's career, the, the shit with Brock Lesnar that fucking spanned fucking years. Years, dude. Fucking and years. I'm, yep. And I'm talking all the way back from the big dog days to this current run um, with fucking Cowboy Brock. I, I, I'm, I'm still... <laughs> I kind of miss Cowboy Brock. A little I don't, bit. I don't miss... I don't, I don't, I don't miss him wanting to have pictures of somebody pissing on their feet. But I miss Cowboy Brock. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> the um, cowboy. I'm gonna be a cowboy, boy, boy. Oh, what you? No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't do that. 
Don't do that. There's, there's a time and place for Kid Rock. Usually after 1 a.m. and the bar is closing and everybody's shit faced. That's the only time it's really acceptable. I guess. Uh, I, I, I can go with you there. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the only time I ever listened to it anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we get we we get all these fucking phenomenal feuds with fucking McIntyre, which brings in fucking uh, Solo at um, Clash of the Castle. Uh, we get we reunite the feud with Kevin Owens, uh, Sammy joining the fucking bloodline and making everything just so fucking. Oosy man, dude, that that was the best part of the fucking bloodline. <laughs> All right, without question, Sami Zayn is was the best part of the bloodline. They no, it Sammy made, Uso was it, the best part of the bloodline. Sammy Uso was the best part of the bloodline, and yes, it's because really it's because he made to me he made them human, like he. He showed a side that they didn't have to be serious assholes the whole time. I mean, with the with times they yes. could, that they had to break character because they were, they were laughing so hard. Like yes, especially Jay. God forbid he keeps a fucking straight face during a promo. <laughs> <I'm> a fucker. <laughs> I I love that promo when they're in the back and uh, one of the the interviewers is back there and and uh, Sammy's like, yeah. We're gonna go to Waffle House, and and Jay was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> Jay was, Even Jimmy and Solo is just like this. It's like putting their head to the side, like, mm. "Yeah." Jay was like, <laughs> and, and Sammy's just going on his fucking rant about his order from the Waffle House, and everybody <laughs> loves the fuck, dude. The fact that WWE does not have a sponsorship with Waffle House is mind blowing. True. All the times in the past fucking 20 years they've been mentioned on fucking TV, they could have been getting money. Mm-hmm. I'm just fucking saying. 100%. And for those of you that have never had Waffle House, first off, my apologies. Um, second off, the fuck are you doing with your life? And third of all, go find a fucking Waffle House. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If you've not been to a Waffle House, I, I don't know if there's any help for you. Unfortunately, uh, especially go on the late night shift near Defeniac Springs on a Saturday night and get the Tourette's girl. Was it Defuniac Springs? Just, yeah, it was. It was uh, that exit. Yes, it was Defuniac Springs. Yeah, overall, the fact that actually he was able to say that that was probably without, the best. Probably the best Waffle House experience I've ever had. I can't say that for myself personally because I spent so much of my early 20s in a Waffle House every Friday and Saturday night. Mostly pulling my friends out of there because they're fucking drunk and retarded and they called me to come get them. But yeah. uh, Damn. (laughs) Uh, Anyway. All the way to the to the the self destruction. I would call it the self destruction of the bloodline, starting with uh, the turn with Sammy at the Royal Rumble twenty twenty three. I'm got my, yes twenty twenty three. That amazing fucking match in Montreal the following month's pay per view. Even though I knew Sammy wasn't going to win, there were there were points in that match where I doubted that. And and that those are those few moments that bring me back into being a wrestling fan Mm -hmm. more than a wrestling booker, more than a worker, more than anything. It's when I, I pretty much know what's about to happen, but they make me doubt it. That's what I love. Professional wrestling. Ooh, that's, that's the word of the week for WWE is professional wrestling. Have you noticed that? I have. I know we're getting off topic. It's no longer a dirty word and I fucking love it. Yes. That's what it fucking is. Uh, whatever. Anyway, um, moving on. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to finish up the last year, but you, you got something yeah, to say about it? No, go ahead. Okay. And then we get to the story. Cody Rhodes. 
which I will now and forever say last year was his fucking year. That is when the trigger should have been pulled. That is when he should have fucking lost the title. That is when fucking Roman should have fucking went away and fucking rehabbed or whatever the fuck he needed to do. For whatever reason, they did not. And they further built it up through the year. I will say 2023 was probably the weakest Roman looked in his title defenses because it just, you knew somebody was going to interfere, but 2023, it was like almost required for Roman Reigns title defense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then we get the return of Randy Orton. We got LA Knight and we got CM Punk and we got LA Knight. I mean, uh, AJ back. AJ Styles back. Did I not say AJ? Mm Mm-mm. I thought I said AJ. Anyway, that fatal four away. I'm not a huge fan of triple threats, fatal four away, multi man matches, unless they're like tag matches and it's not like tornado tags. Right. But that match was fucking good. Yeah. And even there, I thought, you know, there might be a chance they actually drop the title tonight. Didn't happen, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then Cody for the second year straight wins the Royal Rumble, chooses Roman. Doesn't choose Roman. Chooses Roman. Doesn't choose Roman. The Rock comes back. The Rock chooses for him. Triple H comes out. Fucking says, no, we're going to do this. Cody chooses fucking Roman. Big giant fucking tag team match. WrestleMania night one. Big clusterfuck. Going into the night two. Cody finishes the story. And becomes the new undisputed. Wait for it. WWE champion. Notice, I did not say the universal heavyweight Correct. champion. Correct. And I have theories on that. But we'll get into those on next week in wrestling because tonight's all about the bloodline, our favorite spots, our not so favorite spots, uh, where we thought they should uh, could do better, where they pass their expectations, so on and so forth. So, with that history. Mm-hmm. I already know your favorite thing is Usi. Mm-hmm. But there's got there's got to be something else that I wouldn't say rivals it, but it's up there with it. I love I absolutely love the War Games match where Randy came back. I thought that was fucking phenomenal. Um again, I love uh I loved everybody's work in that, but I I loved... Was that the... Yeah. That was the one where Sammy uh, physically stopped the count, right? No, no. You're thinking the year before. And that was my favorite War Games match. Okay. That's that, that's what I'm thinking about then. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. His... Give me a second. I will pull up the actual match and give you who was in it and who wasn't. I remember that he Haluva kicked uh, Kevin in the corner and then let Jay do the splash for the win. Yes, that was 2022 <clears throat> Survivor Series. I was at Rip Ruiz's house for Thanksgiving that weekend. And I've, I've never seen a bunch of workers become marked so fast in my fucking life. <laughs> Let's see. Survivor Series... 2022 war games war games war games dude there is a very good chance we get to hear that this year Mm -hmm. i cannot wait i cannot wait let's see let's see i got it right here so it was the bloodline which was roman jimmy jay Solo and Sammy mm-hmm. going against Sheamus, Ridge Holland, Pete Dunn, Diddy McIntyre, and Kevin Owens. And that's the one you're thinking where Sammy physically stops the count, hits uh, Kevin with the Hiluva, and he gets the splash for three. And that's where him and Jay like just hug it out. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that was a highlight. 
I, as far as the bloodline goes, um, I always like when Cena comes back and, and him and Roman go at it and always mm -hmm. the bloodline gets involved, of course, but the war of words, you know, if there had never been another promo battle between Cena and, and Reigns, all we would have is the, that th memory of that one where he just murdered Reigns mm -hmm. on the mic. Yep. Um, and now, I still don't think he's on Cena's level with mic skills, but he is significantly better <laughs> than back then. Oh, yeah. Well, also, Cena's also got quite a few years of acting classes on top of what he learned in WWE, so... Right. Maybe, maybe he is better than where Cena was when they had that first promo, but not with this John Cena. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And of course, you know, years come with experience and shit like that. Sure. But if you put that Roman Reigns of 2022 against that 2016 John Cena, I think I think Roman could have fucking held his own, no problem. He might have been able to hold his own, but Cena was just savage in that promo. I mean, like he he wanted to draw blood with words, <laughs> and he did just that. And he did. It all it almost it almost felt it almost felt like a shoot. And that's the good thing about Cena. Cena can make anything feel like a shoot if you give him enough freedom to do so. Yeah, hundred percent. I am. I, I cannot wait. Because you know, you fucking know, in 2025, when Raw goes to fucking Netflix, and the fucking training wheels are taken off, you're going to see an unhinged John Cena promo. And it's going to be fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. His, you take the reins completely off that man, there's no telling what he's going to do. They're going to be opening Monday Night Raw on January 1st with Jizz Jams. You understand me? <laughs> Is it January first? I don't know. Oh. It's the it's the first show of January that they're. That oh, they're is it? Oh, with. that's what I meant. Yes. Yeah, it's the first. That's but I don't know January. if it's the. I don't know if it's the first. Right. No, I understand. It's the first show of first, January. Yeah, the first show of January. Oh, not too far away. Just see Cena just on the fucking stage. Oh, baby, I masturbate every, every day. day. <laughs> God damn. Oh, I'm gonna go back and watch that again. <laughs> I ain't seen them. I've I've not sat down and watched the movie yet. I will say that, but just just that minute and a half clip of all his what he calls jizz jams. It that that's almost like Diddy and Meek Mill's audio. It lives rent free in my fucking head. Oh God, yeah, we're not talking about that tonight. If you want to hear about Meek Mill, go check out the last couple shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just go to YouTube. We got him clipped out for you. You're good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, let's anyway, see. I, I know there's one thing, and I, I've complained about it ever since it fucking happened. That I to this day I still don't fucking understand. I've gone back, I've followed the story, I've even printed printed shit out to where <laughs> I can fucking read it. I still don't get it. <clears throat> when Jay and Jimmy left the fucking bloodline. And Jimmy came back and screwed Jay during tribal combat. Jay wasn't fucking part of the goddamn bloodline. He made it clear he was doing this by himself on his own. And then two weeks later, he's fucking doing Roman's fucking errands again. Like, like nothing fucking happened. Right. To, I, I don't, I, it perplexes me. I, I want clarification on this. I don't think that. And that whole thing about, like, I don't know why Jimmy's still in the bloodline. Like, the whole, that whole thing about him leaving and then Jay switching shows and Jimmy coming back to be, like, that whole thing was kind of a cluster. Like, he was. It still is. Like, yeah. it leaves so many unanswered questions. Like, I kind of see what they were going to try to do with, oh, Jimmy's coming back, but he's hinting that he's going to try to take over by undermining Roman and doing all his own shit. Like you see it here and there. And then it just fucking stops. What's going on? Um uh, I'm just car outside. 
It's probably your DoorDash. <laughs> He's got his water burger coming. This is Zaxby's tonight, actually. Excuse me. Excuse me. He wanted the chicken. That's he right. didn't want the Lord's chicken. He wanted the chicken. Diet Coke, I assume, though. I mean, yeah, if it's not... If it's not... Uh... Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. If it's not Diet Coke, it's uh, vodka. I... See, now you had me second guessing if Zaxby's fucking served vodka for a second. You fucker. Yeah, anyway. Something I hate about... Something I hate about fucking DoorDash is that a lot of times, even though I have to hand it to me, they just leave the shit on the door and leave without knocking, I, without doing anything. They just fucking I, leave the food on, on the floor. I've never had that issue, at least with my DoorDash drivers. It happens every once in a while and it pisses the fuck out of me because, or I can't tell you how many times they've dropped it next door. Oh, yeah. I've had that done. Happens but, all the fucking time. And then, um, like, I get the delivered notification, and I'm like, really? I gotta go up and down the street to fucking find the food. At that point, you just need to have your neighbor's phone phone numbers. Like, hey, did you get this? Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Crazy. Fucking DoorDash. Yeah, but, see, you at least have, like, uh, well, they have a halfway decent excuse. You live in a fucking house, so, you know, sometimes addresses can get switched. I live in a fucking apartment complex. Yeah. How do you change the number eight to the number one? Fucking crazy. Yes. Crazy. Um, let me see. Apologies. Uh, what else you got? I don't want to talk to people. <laughs> um... Let's see. We covered the Sammy thing. We've covered the, the Jimmy J thing. Remember a while back when Roman wasn't on TV a lot? Okay, let me let me be more specific. <clears throat> Remember when Solo was getting orders from the tribal chief, but it wasn't Roman giving the fucking orders, and they were just hinting it with somebody else? I don't remember that at all, no. Okay, so this was about October, early November. Where Paul would give Solo an order from Roman. Solo would say, my tribal chief already gave me my orders. And basically goes and does the opposite of what Roman fucking wanted. Yeah. I'm... They did that for a few weeks. And then it just fucking stopped. Yeah. Like, I don't even remember it. Like that's. Yeah. Well, that's... that's the little things. But other than that, dude. um, Easily. The greatest storyline, the greatest fucking faction in the past 10 fucking years. Oh, shit. At least. At least 10 years. Yeah, no, the Bloodline storyline was amazing. Um, had peaks and valleys. It had all kinds of... Um, thank you. Did you find the pen out there? Hmm? It didn't be. Uh oh Right. Anyway, big well, surprise. Give it to me. I'll give it to him. Okay. And put a new one. Oh, we have another one? Okay. All right. All right. That's cool. Honest. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's episode is sponsored by DoorDash. Not only that, it's sponsored by whichever weed we're trying to get. Um, uh, Delta 9? Or Strike mm. Picks? Nope. No? Not tonight? Nope. Okay. No nope, smoke is smoke. Uh, but yeah, definitely the 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 top storyline of shit. Maybe the past twenty years. I don't fucking know. But it definitely mm. definitely the best thing. I mean, what was a better storyline within the last twenty years? And I'll probably agree with you. I just don't remember. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I wouldn't really call it a fucking storyline because it was a yearly thing. But the last, the last, uh, I'd say from 25, 25, 26, 27, 
from WrestleMania 25 to WrestleMania 28, the story between Taker, Sean, and Hunter. Yeah, but... But, again, that's stretching it because it wasn't like a weekly thing. They only brought it up around WrestleMania season. But I would argue that if it was every fucking week. Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, but you're, but you're talking... You know, but as a but as a faction, yeah, yeah. Um, I would st- I would still argue the Shield was a greater faction. I think they were more of, impactful, and in a shorter sp- time span. And look where every one of them are now. Yeah, no, definitely. Two of them main evented fucking WrestleMania this year. One of them's fucking going worldwide, doing anything and everything he wants to do, making millions of fucking dollars. That group. Is the most influential group group of that era, hundred percent. But that that kind of time. Do you consider Bloodline part of the Triple H era, or do you consider it part of the modern era? Because it kind of bleeds in. What's the modern era? Modern era is from, I'd say, twenty ten. Uh, whenever the fuck Vince uh, retired and Triple H took over. Um, so that was what, 22? I mean, I, they did so much before that. Like, it's hard to it's hard to say. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, if If anything, I would argue that the end of the bloodline is the start of the Triple H era. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, I think, I don't think Sammy would have gotten such a big push in the bloodline and out of the bloodline had it not been for trips. Mm-hmm. Um, so he obviously he had a big play in it. Oh yeah. Cause look, look at the competitors, <clears throat> Drew, Kevin, Daniel Bryan, Edge, Brock Lesnar, all of them fucking Triple H favored, mm-hmm. and look look how far they got pushed. With yeah. the exception of Brock Lesnar, who thought it was be fucking hilarious to bring a tractor to the ring. <laughs> That's still the most fucked up thing I've seen in a, in a WWE show. Yeah, fuck. I could have went bad. They should have just went all the way and just flipped the whole fucking ring right on fucking Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Fuck it. Okay. So what do you think? What was what do you think the answer to that question is? I would say of the modern era because it really started when Vince was still riding creative and shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then I think H had a lot of influence over it. Yes. Um but But, I I do think it's uh McMahon. But as but as Stephanie said at WrestleMania this year's WrestleMania marked the the official beginning of I'm not gonna call him Paul the Triple H era. Yeah. As long as I live, I I will not fucking call him Paul Levesque. <laughs> it's either gonna be Hunter or it's gonna be fucking Triple H. I, I I can't just like flip that switch. That's like calling you your fucking shoot name. I can't fucking do it to save my life. It's it's hard. It's hard. I mean, still want to call Copeland Edge. Still. Oh, I still do. Yeah. It, it's just. Crazy. So I, I still call Cody Cody. It's weird. So before we move on to the next uh, segment, instead of running ads tonight, this is just going to be a full a full ad run of our newest shirt, the Fuck Logan Paul T-shirt. Fuck Logan Paul. Hashtag. Hashtag. Fuck, fuck Paul. Logan Paul. See here, we got the the Hulkamania font with the um, the back uh, the blurred background um, mm-hmm. comes in both black and yellow. Hashtag Brother. fuck Logan Paul. Much more Hulkamania here with the yellow shirt. Um, you got the fuck Logan Paul on the front. Of course, you got the uh, heel shit logo on the nape of the neck. Um, so classy. Only eighteen ninety five. Check it out. Um, almost at cost. It's a little more expensive because you had 
because there's print on the back that always pops it up some. But yeah, it's finally here. Fuck Logan Paul. Hashtag fuck Logan Paul. So yeah. I tell you what, I'm feeling generous tonight. Mm. We're going to do a giveaway. Ooh. This is what y'all need to do, ladies and gentlemen. Dark has it somewhere on the screen, I'm sure. If not, it's in the it's in the links below. Mm-hmm. Email us at heelshitpodcast at gmail.com and the subject matter put fuck Logan Paul and in the body of it, give us all your shipping information. And your size information. And your size and all that good stuff. Does not matter where worldwide. We will ship it anywhere on our dime. We will give you, let's see, today as we're recording is the 11th. It will close on the 1st of May. Yes. And we're going to announce this every show, um, but starting today through the 1st, email us at heelshitpodcast at gmail.com. Put hashtag fuck Logan Paul in the subject line. Uh, give us your size and your shirt color preferences, whether you like this yellow version or the black version. Uh, it's got the same stuff, the heel shit on the back of the neck and <clears throat> the fuck Logan Paul on the front. And we will pick two, two lucky winners. Yes, sir. And we will announce them on the, let's see, four, four, two, two. We will announce it on the May 5th edition of HSP. Yep. And if you guys are interested, you can click the link, uh, the merchandise uh, Streamlabs link in the description or any of the panels in, on the video s- screens that you're watching. I have m- merch links on all there. So, yes. yeah, we've been talking about this shirt for a while. It's finally out. You will see me and Draven rock that in public without oh, question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Because hashtag fuck Logan Paul. Especially at his brother's Mike Tyson fight, which I am taking that weekend off to watch. Dude, I can't wait for Tyson to fucking murder that kid. We need to find out if it's going to be showing it like Dave and Buster's or something. Yeah, as far as I know, the, the commission hasn't 100% approved it yet. So it hasn't been approved, but they're still promoting they're, the fuck out of it. Yeah, it's it's on its way to being approved. They're they're just making Tyson undergo more health evaluations because he's fucking in his fifties. So they just they just want to make sure fucking Jake is has a has a decent chance because Tyson's gonna murder that motherfucker. He's gonna fucking murder him. Oh my god! If you mu- Dude, if you guys. I'm telling you. Heel faction, if you've not seen Mike Tyson fight, like go Ever. back and watch his shit. He was, I mean, how many thirty-second knockouts did that man have? I mean, More he, than I can count. he decimated people. And then after he went to prison, he came out. He was just as badass. He was chiseled out of stone, and he was crazy as fuck. Mm-hmm. And now, now he has this Bruce Lee mindset of he doesn't want to be that dangerous, but he knows how to be that dangerous. He knows how to tap into that. Mm-hmm. And that makes him even more fucking dangerous. 100%. 100%. Be like water. Yep, him and his pigeons. He was like, it's like, did you want to be a boxer when you were a kid? And he was like, no. When I was about 10, some kid came in and broke the neck of one of my pigeons. And I beat the fuck out of them. And then people started bringing other people for me to fight and pay me money to do it. That's how I became a boxer. Like, all right. Hey, do you. He's had some great quotes over the years. Obviously, the most popular one is... uh, I broke my back. Spinal. (laughs) Um, I thought thought that's where we were going. (laughs) No, his most famous one is everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Um, but, oh, I thought we just say that. No, no, he originated that. But the funniest one ever was he was still young, stupid, but badass. And this female reporter asked him 
some question. And he was like, I'm try I'm sorry. Um I I, I don't answer questions <laughs> from female reporters unless I fuck them. <laughs> so, so we're gonna move on. <laughs> I can't I can't I can't tell if you're trying to do Mike Tyson or Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> uh, they're not really that different on an impression level. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna try. And Mike Tyson. Yeah, I don't I don't answer questions from uh from female reporters unless I have sex with them. You need to say that our next promo. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we get interviewed, you have to do it. All right. Oh, please be a fucking TV taping, too. For the love of God, be a fucking TV taping. Oh, I made my Dothan, Alabama television debut this past week. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I sent it to you. But, yeah, it's been airing uh, at least once a fucking day, that show. Hmm. And it's been getting good fucking reviews. Very nice. Can't yeah, wait. buddy. Can't wait till we uh, go up there and they can see the full tag team on TV. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's heel shit. That's heel shit. Now, usually you take care of this. I normally do, but you found a gym. You found but, a gym. But unfortunately, we don't have anything to pull up to show you like some hot chick like biting some dude to dick off or whatever for burning her dinner or some shit. Even though I'm sure that's out there somewhere. I'm sure it is. Anyway, <clears throat> this one I actually heard uh, on one of the podcasts I listen to, uh, Nerd Rage Radio. So, Bobby Skullface, fucking love you, dude. Keep up the good fucking work. You're an inspiration to us all. Uh, and he was telling the story, and it was up in Pennsylvania. Now, I don't know the fucking names. I don't care to remember the fucking names, nor I remember to care to fuck the uh, give a shit about the fucking addresses, but those will come in fucking play. So you're an Xbox player, correct? Mm-hmm. And Xbox is predominantly owned with like battle Royal style, first person shooters, call of duty. Uh, Ghost well, Recon, if you're, if like you're an online game player, then I guess, yeah, I don't do that, but yeah, I guess, well, I'm saying predominantly. Yeah. That's what Xbox is known for, where it's PlayStation's more story driven single player. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this 17 year old kid is in a chat. And he he found where one dude just kept respawning. And every time the dude respawned, he fucking keep fucking him up, right? And the dude's getting fucking pissed off about it and saying, you know, fuck off somewhere else. Go fuck with somebody else. And the kid's just like Nah, your mom's a hoe. You, you're a <laughs> cocksucker. Shit. The typical teenage shit that you will say online that you can't say in front of your family or you're going to eat soap. Or you can't say in real life or you get your ass beat. That part. Yep. That's coming into play later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, kid kept fucking doing it, kept doing it. So the dude kicked him off the fucking, off the chat and off the fucking game. And the game continued. Well, next session kid gets back in the fucking game with that dude finds him keeps doing fucking doing it right and now this guy's fucking livid Hmm. livid (laughs) and the kid's still just talking all sorts of fucking shit you know cock sucking motherfucker suck my asshole whatever and this dude fucking loses his fucking mind and says i'm gonna fucking find you i don't care where you live i'm gonna come to your house i'm gonna fuck you up (laughs) <laughs> and this fucking kid was dumb enough to give out his address. Well, luckily for you, I live in... Uh, uh, I'll just pick a city in Pennsylvania for shits and giggles. I live in Pittsburgh. I live at 357 North 17th Street. And, and the dude was like, is the zip code this? He's like, yeah. 357 17th Street, huh? Yeah. Stand by. Dude gets off the fucking game, calls the Uber. John Candy will get with you in just a second on that. Gets a fucking Uber, drives this motherfucker to his house, 
which is only three and a half blocks away. <laughs> this kid fucked with a dude that happened to be three blocks away. <laughs> Busts through the fucking door. Fucks him up. Walks out the fucking door. Gets in the Uber and goes back fucking home. <laughs> now, the grandma who was sitting in the house just watched this fucking random ass guy walk through this fucker's house, went upstairs, beat the fuck out of her grandson, and left. She's calling for fucking help. <laughs> By the time they're fucking there, she's fucking still frantic as shit. And she, and, and this is a quote. He just came in and just kept beating on him and beating on him and beating on him and fucking him up. And then he left. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do not ever give out your fucking address because you never know <laughs> when a motherfucker is right next door mm. or three and a half blocks down in this case. <sighs> All right. yeah, that's real shit. So, John Canning, we're going to get... Um your answer here but at first you might be interested in this john we just released our fuck logan paul t-shirt <laughs> um hashtag fuck logan paul you can find it at in the merch uh, panel around there um we got this uh hulkamania style font with the faded or the the blurred background um we got it in both black and yellow. Fuck Logan Paul on the back. You get the the heel shit logo. Um, and what we're doing right now, I don't know if you heard, but we're doing a giveaway. All right. Yeah. Email us at heelshitpodcast at gmail dot com. Put hashtag fuck Logan Paul in the subject line. Send us your shirt size, your color preference, and your shipping address, and we're going to pick two people to get this t-shirt for free, free shipping, everything right to your door. Can't beat that shit. Mm -hmm. Can't beat that shit. Um, but to answer your question, the state of wrestling now... It is. You, you want to go first? Or you want me to? It's a great fucking time to be a wrestling fan right now. Yes. It is a great fucking time to be a wrestling fan. Um, got not only two really strong majors, but indies are going crazy right now. Um, yeah, man, it's UK too. We'll ship it to the UK for sure. Oh yeah. Worldwide, you could be in fucking Antarctica, but if you're in Antarctica, we're we're gonna have some questions for yeah, you. Yeah, you're, you're gonna need more than a t-shirt in Antarctica. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can get sweaters. Um, I mean, I still have the old limited edition print all over sweatshirt of TFK. But yeah, um, um, I think it's like I said, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. I think both TV promotions are doing a great job. TNA is doing huge things. All the the indies are on fire right now, more than mm -hmm. I've seen in a long time. A lot of our friends are working those high end indies. If not, they're working dark matches for AEW, Ring of Honor, TNA. Yeah, man, this um, is a really great time to be a wrestling fan. Yes, uh, it hasn't been. With, with... It hasn't been but... this fun to be a wrestling fan since about 1997. That's a little young for me. I would say, I would say 2004 for me, just because you know you are a little bit older than I am. But after like 2004, 2005, that's when I kind of started losing my interest, at least in WWE's eyes, because I was watching TNA real hardcore back then. And those were the best years of fucking TNA, bar none. 04, 05, 06, 07. Um, with the changing of the guard for uh. WWE, the, the direction they're going, I think is fucking fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's all the little things that, that workers like us fucking look into how the story is performed, who's working, what, how we're getting to the end of the story. Obviously fucking Cody has the story thing down pat. Um, even from a fan's point of view, how it's fucking shot, the, the trons, the way the entrances are, um, 
who's your favorite baby face who, who's your most despised heel all that is so different now than it was two years ago when vince had his hands on it mm-hmm. and it, and it's for the best um well not only that but like <clears throat> uh john you're new so i'll i am a a big AEW fan i prefer their wrestling to wwe but since triple h has taken over wwe i don't have any complaints about wwe anymore you know it it they have without question and i said this already this week on weekend wrestling they are by far the king of the spectacle they um they know how to put on huge events better than anybody in any sport i would say Mm -hmm. it's it's a bigger event than the super bowl it's just fucking phenomenal Um, and now that triple h is is fully in charge of booking it's it's a great product again and i and i can't um and i can't dispute that i mean it was always a good product don't get me wrong i mean there there was times that it was good those times it was shit but it was always more or less a good product and i i kind of agree with uh john here about the last couple years being hard but to me, it's the style that they perform. I know you enjoy it. I don't, um, especially multi-man matches. I think they're fucking scrambled eggs. Um, if you don't know what that e- means, it means a clusterfuck, basically, just me being nice. Um, I feel the stories have always been better with WWE rather than with AEW. Um, my main issue is, to me, it feels like AEW books more to get the guys in the back to pop and hope that the fucking fans will pop with them, which they fucking do, but it's just not for me. And that's the good thing about professional wrestling now is that no matter your taste, there's something out there for everyone. Um, Whether it's WWE, AEW, New Japan, CMLL, uh, MLW and major league wrestling, anything like that. Um, It's, it's just a really great time to be a wrestling fan. And, and and anybody that wants to sit there and bitch that one company's better than the other, you need to sit down and shut the fuck up and basically watch what you like. You know, the, and don't watch what you don't like. Right. And don't actually. And it's like, I can't tell you how much my blood boils when I see these marks on either side, but it's. I don't know, I don't, whatever side, whatever. But it happens on both sides. Like, mm-hmm. sit there hoping that the other company goes out of business. Like, I can't tell you how many, and I, I don't know why, but I attract the WWE marks. Um, I can't Quite tell you how many times I've seen WWE marks, like, hoping a wrestler, an AEW wrestler gets hurt, or hoping... that they have to close down and it's like you're you're literally hoping for hundreds of people not to be able to feed their families like that's what you're doing all right it's it's you're one of the most disgusting human beings on the planet if you're if you're hoping that one of the companies fails Yes. Um, I mean, if you do, you should be forced to go six months without feeding your family to see <laughs> how, how it is if I, if you want the company to close. Been there. I've I've been there. I've I've struggled. Yeah. So I understand all that. Uh and, and you're right, there's a lot of them that just want shit to go out of business. But that's like being a fucking McDonald's employee wishing Burger King goes out of business. Basically. Why the f- why? No. Don't don't you all want to fucking provide for your fucking families and make a, a fucking I wouldn't say a livable wage at this point because hell I can't even make a fucking livable wage and I make over twenty bucks an hour, but make a wage to help provide for your household and for your families and don't get me wrong, you make a good wage, I make a decent wage. This podcast brings some revenue, our wrestling brings in some revenue, our merch brings in some revenue, but we're not going to sit there and have. 
let's let's say for shits and giggles, Jeff Jarrett's podcast. If they go in there and they start bashing our podcast, wanting us to fucking shut down, we're not going to fucking sit there and want them to fucking do the same thing to them. No, you know, converse with us. Don't don't sit there and just wish death upon somebody. Fucking sit there and and have a conversation. Explain why you feel this way. Why do you feel AEW is better than WWE? Why do you feel WWE is better than TNA? And 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 come to come to a fucking common ground that you know, regardless of how you feel, one brand being better than the other, it's all still professional wrestling. They're all still here to fucking entertain you. They're all still here to make a fucking living. And let's just be fucking thankful that these guys go out there day in and day out, put their bodies on the line for nothing more than our fucking entertainment. And I have to tell you, man, there. I mean, um. You know, these people, they're they are making a good living. They're doing what they love. They're providing for their families. Don't watch them if you don't want to fucking watch them. Yeah, it's, it's that simple. I mean, I don't fucking watch AEW unless something very particular comes on that I want to see. Nine times out of ten, Dark doesn't watch fucking WWE programming unless something's coming up that we want to fucking cover or watch, want to see. Well, we don't we don't really I've, force ourselves to fucking yeah, sit there and watch. I ourselves. watch it pretty consistently now. I guess yeah, it's, now it's a good but I'm talking about so. but I'm talking about when Vince was like elbow deep in the fucking writing and was like, "Fuck, Raw's coming on tonight." Yeah, no, it was really three hours to. of fucking trash. Well, two and a half. I mean, the bloodline was on there. No, nah, that's true. At times, at times. But yeah, yeah. So you know, that's our perspective on what the wrestling looks like today. I think it's. I think it's in a great spot. Mm-hmm. I wish there weren't. I, um. Well, see, I'm of two minds of that, John. Um, I can see where you're coming from on that. But also, Tony is still learning this business as where with WWE, like Dark said during a WrestleMania review. It feels like a new company with 40 years of money and 40 years of experience. But really, there is such a great fucking ladder of uh, people in the office that WWE runs fucking smoothly. And Tony is still getting to that fucking point. Tony still feels that he needs to be fucking in charge of everything. He doesn't delegate certain things to certain people. And once he once he overcomes that and once he realizes that and, you know, starts delegating uh, certain projects to certain people that place is going to run a lot smoother i feel and i also feel that the shows themselves will be a lot better than what they already are um i mean it's like do we really want to go back and look at how how vince acted his first three or four years as a as a promoter the mistakes that he made territory man yeah i mean so why why are we not grading tony on the same curve why is it that four years in he's supposed to handle things as strongly as vince did well well like like i just said he's still at that learning curve thinking Mm. he needs to be in charge of everything but i under i also understand where john's coming from he's a fucking mate but also look at it from this point of view every company you're gonna it's gonna be like that whether it's in wrestling or in fucking life they're gonna have their favorites they're going to have their black sheep and they're going to have the ones they just don't want to fuck with. Mm-hmm. Um, right now it's just very predominant with, with Tony and it's really out there with Tony because Tony makes all the fucking final calls and it's so easy to pick on him. And I, I know dark and I have gone and gotten into this. Well, hell, it's actually been arguments before where, you know, I I've said the same thing, but I've also had to step back and be like, you know what? There was a time where WCW was in the same position. There was a time when the NWA was in the same position. There was a time when TNA was in the same position. And I was around for all the TNA stuff from 2002 to 2005 because my uncle's working security and working shows for them. So it, it's one of those things where there will be growing pains. Um, it's just it's just unfortunate. It's in, it's in such a vast light right now because it's WWE's only competition. And everybody looks for the smallest thing to say anything mm-hmm. yeah. but the, the the whole thing with jack perry and and we actually got into a conversation about this earlier today 
well, argument, but conversation of this whole Jack Perry CM Punk thing. You have to look at it from two points of view. Uh, I see it from Dark's point of view as far as it being a business. And, you know, if you do that in a business, you know, you're going to get punished regardless. But I also have my point of view of where, you know, if you go to your boss and you tell your boss you need to fix this or like, acknowledge it before somebody else does and they don't fucking do it and you take matters into your own hands. I mean, I can't really fault the man for fucking doing that. Now, regardless. I fault the man for for n not letting it rest at jaw jacking. Look, there's there, this is not this is not the 80s. This is not people do that shit in the back and fuck each other up. And like this is a worldwide multi-million dollar business. You get paid millions of dollars. And you got to fucking f f get physical with somebody for running their mouth? Like, come on, dog. I well, let me well, let me ask you this. Do you think the same shit would have happened if it was backstage at a fucking WrestleMania or something? Or do you think they would have pulled him into a fucking room and said, listen here, quit running your fucking mouth. Quit being so fucking hard-headed. Let's go out and do our fucking jobs. If you can't fucking do that, then we're going to fucking suspend your motherfuckers. Then we're going to fucking fire you. Again, this is this just has to, happens to go back to how one company's ran over another. I I I mean, uh, I don't care what the situation was. I don't care what job you have, what office you work in. You would get fired for that shit. I'm sorry. It doesn't. You don't get to like get physical with somebody and you're in a coworker just because you're. Your butt hurt that homie wanted to use glass and you didn't want him to. Well, again, I can also see it from the point of the small town thing because I've seen it multiple fucking times in warehouses on construction sites where a boss won't fucking handle something and the guy goes and fucking handles it and they fucking just let him fucking get it out their fucking system and move on. Okay, yeah, well, that's, that's I wouldn't funny. advise anyone listening to this to go in their office and get physical with somebody and then cry when you get punished. Like, it's, I don't know, the guy that fucking T-boned me, I really want to fucking get a hold of him. Yeah, he wasn't a co-worker. Yeah, you got a point. I, I, but we could have made him a co-worker for like five minutes. And the, the problem is, like, eh, I'm not going to get into this. I don't I'm not trying to get all fucking spastic. No, I'm not either. I'm just, I'm just trying to it's... answer what John had to say. But the, the last thing we'll, we'll, we'll touch on real quick before we'll get off, because I know we're running late, is the, the whole Sammy Guevara being injured. Um, dude, that's just the risk we take as professional wrestlers. It's the style that they choose to fucking perform in. You're never going to see fucking old dark courts here going to top rope and hit a 630. You're never going to see me fucking jump off a ladder, hit a 450 anymore. We know the limitations of our bodies. Those guys also know the limitation of the bodies. They also know the risk of hitting such maneuvers. So, again, injuries happen. That, that's why they always fucking start the shit with don't try this shit at home. Because if you're not fucking trained and you don't know what the fuck you're doing, you're going to hurt yourself or worse. I've been doing this 15 years. And I've broke my fucking neck. I've blown out both my fucking knees. I've destroyed my fucking shoulder. And it's one of those things where it was all accidental. None of that was, you know, me trying to fucking kill myself. Accidents if, uh, happen. If fucking... Uh, uh, I was gonna... Oh, and I broke my ass bone. There's that one too. Huh. That, that one still hurts. If uh, Fatima Fatu still has a job after hurting so many people, then I, I'd say... Uh... Let's say Sarah Mizoka. Yes. That's uh, Nia Jax for you guys. Yeah, she... Yeah, that's my waifu. Yeah, she's a... Uh, she's a dangerous lady, we'll say. Yes. Yes. Um, and and you've had words with her about it before, but, you know, we've, we've since made up a chip. Yeah. She's a sweet kid. Yeah. She's a sweet girl. Um, oh, yeah. She, she's a, a very great girl to be around. Yeah, she's awesome. It's dangerous. Uh, Only in bed, anyway. though. Shit. 
<laughs> all right, we're running all out right, of time. All right, guys. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. I hope you'll uh, check out the crawl for our schedule. We do uh, talking shit Monday nights at 8 p.m. We do weekend wrestling Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. And we do this show, HSP Live, Thursday nights. Um, our podcasts drop uh, Mondays and Fridays. Yep. And so you got plenty of chances to, to hear what we're about. Um, there are some real funny shit in our catalog. <laughs> Go oh, yeah. back and check it out. Um, and, and also, if, if you guys have any questions you want us to answer on air, send them to the email, uh, hillshitpodcast at gmail.com. We get enough emails in, we'll, we'll start answering them on air. Yeah, absolutely. Instead of just on the stream chats. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. John, thanks for the conversation. Hopefully, yes, we, hopefully we'll hopefully see you again back here. Um, and uh, so... For Draven Grimes, I'm Dark Chords. This has been Heel Shit. Why do we call it that? Because bad guys do heel shit. Peace.